On our previous episode about rebreather diving, we met TDI instructor Mark Nevin, who is a rebreather instructor trainer. We talked about what a rebreather is and its basic function, and we talked about the benefits of rebreather diving. In this episode, we're going to talk about the misconceptions and the dangers associated with rebreather diving. Welcome to Everything Scuba. So next up are some of the misconceptions in regards to rebreather diving. I had some misconceptions personally in terms of how this worked and uh, how it didn't work. What are, give me a couple of things that uh, divers approach you with that they don't quite, you know, conceive of properly. Um, so that it just has to be for deep diving. That's probably one of the biggest ones. So it's not just for deep diving. We can do shallow dives and we get the benefit of uh, the higher concentration of oxygen or hard partial pressure of oxygen. Um, so we get to spend more time in the water sure. with all of the benefits that we were just talking about, the silence, uh, the lower gas consumption, right. um, and overall just even easier to dive. What about the misconception that this is just a, a dangerous machine and uh, eventually it's going to kill me? Um, so that, that myth is just what it is. It's a myth. Um, we've gone completely uh, 360 uh, with the technology to the point where if you jump in the water with the rebreather turned off, it's going to power on using a wet activation and do everything that it can, granted that you put it together correctly, sure. um, to keep you alive. Yeah, and a, and a large portion of the course, and we're gonna talk about certification, a large portion of the course is the actual construction of this unit. And you're, I mean, we all know as divers, we're responsible for our own safety. And that becomes a huge part when it's involved in building this. So misconceptions, dangers. We already brought up one. Some people might view this as a dangerous machine. What are some of the dangers of using a rebreather that maybe I wouldn't have to deal with as an open circuit diver? Uh, we definitely have the CO2 issue. Okay. Um, hypercapnia or high CO2 is not something that we typically have to deal with on open circuit because you're inhaling from a regulator, which mm -hmm. is coming from a fixed supply tank, and you're exhaling that into the atmosphere. Um, as long as we put the rebreather correctly, uh, together correctly, um, we are typically not going to have to worry about that, although we do train sure. um, for what if that ends up happening. Um, so then we actually get into the uh, topic of we now have a lot more options as far as emergencies go. Got it. Ultimately, we've got finishing the dive on the rebreather, right. which with CO2, we couldn't. Mm -hmm. So we always have to plan enough open circuit bailout. So we'll always bring enough gas to get ourselves to the surface uh, from a side mounted tank, sure. uh, including our decompression stops. Right. So guys, if you're getting some uh, benefit from this video, uh, learning some things about rebreather drop a like on this video also got comments got questions about rebreather diving drop some in the comments below so mark we have a tagline on our show it says if you love to scuba dive dive into everything scuba so i'm always interested when i meet divers why do you love to scuba dive i love it all i love the the shallow diving i love the deep diving wrecks reefs macro photography wide angle photography and I can't get He's enough He's a man after my own heart right here. <laughs> he and I have had a lot of discussions on photography this week. Yeah. He's got some awesome photographs. He can see stuff that I would completely miss. <laughs> yeah. So that, that's awesome. Uh, tell me about your longest and deepest dive on a rebreather. It might be two separate dives. Yep. Uh, so the deepest dive that I've taken the inspiration is 450 feet. I was support for another diver who was uh, not on inspiration. Won't hold it against him. Um, but he was doing a 550 or 600 foot dive. Um, so I was the deep support for that. Um, that also turns out to be my longest in the water uh, dive, uh, being right at about four hours. Okay. What was your decompression time on the way back? Three hours and 30 minutes. <laughs> wow. wow. So as the world starts to wake up from the COVID nightmare, we're all starting to get itchy feet to go back to our favorite places to dive. Where is the favorite, your favorite place that you've ever been diving and why? Definitely Truck Lagoon. Uh, out in Micronesia, 
the wrecks are just amazing out there. Wow. And uh, everything that has to come with them, uh, the penetrations into engine rooms, uh, seeing the bombs and bottles of sake and bicycles and uh, barrels of oil, um, still smelling the oil. Um, and we were last there three years ago. Uh, so hopefully in the next two years, we'll be back. How do people get in contact with you, Mark? I mean, uh, you have a website, you have a Facebook page. Uh, if there's divers out there that are really interested in becoming a rebreather diver and want to pursue that, how do they contact you? Uh, first of all, silentdiving.com. That's uh, one of the, the main distributors for AP diving uh, in the US, North America, and Caribbean. Um, def definitely one way to get in touch with me there. Or mark at nevinscuba.com, uh, nevinscuba.com being my website, sure. or Facebook. Mark Nevin, Nevin Scuba. Yeah, and I'll drop all of those, uh, all of that information down below for you guys in the comment, in the uh, description below. Up next, we are going to have Mark give a tour of the rebreather to show you the different components and what's hidden behind this yellow casing. So click the link right down below me to go find that video. Click the link just to the right to go check out more about rebreathers.